I'm going to build an app on stage here using the InfoChip's API. It's just going to be a, a data-driven app that just kind of shows you how to use the InfoChip's API and how to use APIs and do cool things with them. And we're going to do it in Rails. Uh, I want to show you what the app is going to look like in the end. We're going to build something like this. And it doesn't look like much right now, but this is actually really cool. Um, we've got a list of users over here, and we can sort by count and weight. Um, this is a list of a network of a network. And that's something you currently can't do on Twitter very easily. Oops. Bring up my control key. OK, so. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a product manager at InfoChimps. Uh, I started on Rails 0.9. Actually, I think 0.8, but my first app was 0.9. Uh, then I got sucked away from that, and I started doing uh, enterprise-y stuff. I worked for a bunch of big, scary, evil companies uh, that made me a lot of money. So now I can actually go back to the startup world. And now I'm back in the Ruby world, and I'm working with InfoChimps. Uh, we are a data marketplace uh, with InfoChimps. I'm a product manager. I'm also the dev evangelist. Uh, I also do a lot of code, so I do a lot of Ruby coding, but um, I'm not necessarily our best coder by any means. Um, when I was with Vinia, I worked, uh, I did enterprise content management, so things like Interwoven, uh, SharePoint, Vinia Content Management, Documentum, uh, Drupal. I guess familiar with Drupal at least. It's like an open source one, Alfresco maybe. It um, so was pretty cool. Um, they made enough money, and, and now I'm back at InfoChimps. A little bit about us: we're the Amazon.com for data. Uh, we our data marketplace, anyone can buy and sell data online through our website. That doesn't matter how big or how small. We happen to deal with a lot of big data, but we also have a lot of small data as well. Um, we also do really cool things with like huge data, um, such as Twitter data, MySpace, and we also have an API, uh, or sorry, IP census. Um, uh, the Twitter data is just a collection of tweets that we've collected since 2006. And when we're talking about big data, we're talking terabyte scale. Um, so this isn't something that you deal with on your laptop. This is like cluster computing and that sort of thing. So is anyone familiar with the cluster computing? You guys do that? A couple of you. OK, cool. Uh, so to give you an idea of what kind of shop we are, these are some of the technologies we use. Um, and you'll notice a lot of them are very Ruby-based. We use Rails and MySQL for uh, InfoChimps.org and all these other things for all our other stuff. So Sinatra, we've got like a few small apps. Uh, a lot of the stuff on here that you probably don't recognize, Hadoop, Pig, Chef, Cassandra, uh, Flamingo, Tokyo Tyrant, Wukong. Um, these are for big data compute. We use Amazon EC2 for our API. Uh, it's completely scalable. Uh, Rack is the front end for that. Um, our two co-founders are like really technical guys, so that's uh, that's why we uh, have so many Ruby things. Uh, we're like a completely Ruby shop. We don't have like any Java or anything at all. Like it's it's 100% Ruby. The only thing that's really not Ruby that we code in is Pig. Uh, which is like SQL for big, giant data. And it's, it's just as ugly as SQL. OK, so here's a picture of what we're going to build today. Um, so, so this is what is really cool, because we have my time down. Uh, we've got, right now you can only, most apps, you can only view the Twitter space with a very uh, finite area, right? Like it's very you-centric. Like you can view that user and that user's network. And you can view that user's content, so like their tweets, their friends, blah, 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 blah. Um, you can't really expand out of that well, and you can't examine it very well. And the InfoChimps API allows you to do that because we've done the huge data compute on this stuff. Um, so right now, like the brown circle and the blue circle is like all you can view. Uh, InfoChimps has expanded it to be like the green and outward. Uh, so what we're actually going to build is something to do with our API called StrongLinks. And StrongLinks shows the interactions between users and how strong those are. So if you query strong links, it will tell you the top 100 people you interact with most on Twitter. Um, and I'll show you the, the API call for that right here. And this is you can actually do the API call as a get request from the browser. Um, I don't know if you guys can read that. If you can't, um, just go to api.infochimps.com, and it will tell you how. Uh, these are, actually, you can't do it very well there. there. Um, so this is the entire string that you get back. So I queried on username infochimps. And it's returning the user IDs and the weight of that link. And what the weight is representative of is replies, retweets, and mentions. So this actually tells you just how interactive you've been with X user. So like 
the first user in your list is going to be your most interactive user. Um, last user is going to be your least interactive. You see, I have like 0.5 over here. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to build the app. Um, so the, the reason this is so cool is because you can you can examine outside of your network. So say you're following um, all these people, right? And they're your strongest links. So these brown circles represent your strong links. Um, they might also follow some other people that you might be interested in. So like this green guy on the left here, he's just like one friend of one friend. So like he's a friend of a friend. You might want to know him. He's kind of important, but uh, I don't really, really care. Um, this other dude over here, though, he's connected to five of your friends. So he's a friend of five friends. So this is significant because he's not just a friend of five friends, but he's a friend of five strong links. So these are the people that you interact with most and then the people that he interacts with most. And this is like really cool because you probably want to know this guy. He's someone you should probably follow because he's probably either really interesting or like really close to your circle of friends. So we're going to find him. So what we're going to do is, um, and this is really high level, uh, we're going to loop through your user's top 10 strong links. The query call returns 100 of them. Uh, but we're only going to go through 10 because 100 strong links times 100 strong links, that's like two hops out of your network, is 10,000, and that's a lot of uh, API calls. Um, so we're only going to do 10 out of 10, which is 100. Uh, we're going to count the number of times that user shows up, and this is cool because that's the number of times that it's a friend of a friend. So if he shows up one time, he's a friend of one friend. If he shows up 10 times, he's a friend of 10 friends. Um, we're also going to, and it's not just a friend, but because it's strong links, he's like the strong link of a friend. So he's the one that they interact with most. We're going to find the total weight, and this is how much interaction they've had. So retweets again, replies, and mentions. And we're going to find all their trust ranks. This is another metric that InfoChimps puts out to the API, and it's based on Google PageRank. Are you guys familiar with Google PageRank? Yes? Okay. It's a really awesome algorithm uh, for measuring the global importance of pages. So like Google and Facebook have like PageRank 9 or 10. And uh, everybody else doesn't have a very good patron trick. Right? Um, but this is to measure overall influence in the Twitterverse. So for example, Mashable has like a huge page rank, or Lady Gaga would have a huge page rank, and I have like a page rank one something. Um, and then we're going to sort them not using SQL. And that's going to be really cool because it's not SQL, and you don't have to do uh, sort in your, in your Ruby app. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and build it. Uh, if you guys want to follow along, here's the GitHub URL. Um, you can also find an API key here to use to demo here uh, if you just want to play around with the InfoChimps API. And you can also check out my tag as I'm going along because I'm just going to code. I'm going to check out my tag too. Um, it's just uh, the command is git checkout and then the tag name, their progress dash, whatever. Okay. You guys are ready to build? Let's go. Okay, so we got to start our app. Um, we're going to just do, um, so the dependencies are going to be uh, sudo gem install. We've got chimps, which is the info chimps library that you guys can use for any Ruby app. Um, you need Rails if you don't have already have it. And friendly ID. Um, and I'm actually not going to install those because I already have them. Um, so I'm going to make a Rails app called Springlinks LSRC. And I also need a single controller. Um, and we're going to have one view called show. Oops. Oh, I guess I need to be there. We've got it. And this is JA, guys. This is like, this is um, TextMate before TextMate existed. So, as you can see, I practiced a few times here. Okay, so I've got all my files in my file tree here. Um, so I'm going to go through how to set up a, uh, an environment for your Rails app if you want to do the InfoChimps API. Um, first, we're going to configure gems. And let's need, um, what did I say, from the ID? We also need uh, gems. That just goes in your environment RD file. Uh, this is the really important part here. So in environments, uh, you can actually specify this elsewhere. I prefer to do it here. 
Um, we actually have to go through and uh, specify our. I'm just going to copy this from GitHub because it's easier. Oh no, I lose my connection. I did. Are you guys all still connected? Yes. Have uh, you moved to the con con connector? Con right. Okay, so this is the line, and this is just configuring everything for what you need. Um, I'm going to switch this now just so I don't forget. We're going to cache later, and uh, I actually work off of uh, virtual machines. So I'm going to change it to false. You guys don't have to do that part. This is a really important line, and this just pulls the, uh, the environment variable for the API key. And you can set this pretty easily in things like Roku, and we'll set it in just a minute here. Okay, and then we need to set up our routes file. And in here, you're basically just going to uh, map resources. Uh, it's going to be something uh, tweeters. And then we'll start building in the controller. So we've only got one controller and one view here. And we've got the show and we've got the tweeters controller. So this is really simplistic. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually looping through strong links twice. So does everyone everyone definitely understands what strong links is? It's your most important people that you interact with. So it's your most important people, the top 100, and then their most important people. So we have to loop through all of your guys, and then we have to loop through all of those guys, which can be a total of 10,000, or I'm going to do 100. Um, so in order to do that, uh, I'm going to actually just build a method here that just loops through it. So we're going to do it twice, so, I don't have to, so we don't have to repeat. Um, and we can be a little bit dry, right? Um, so we're just going to call it uh, strong links for user. Um, I'm going to pass two arguments, which are going to be ID and ID type. This is going to be um, the actual things that you add into your API call. So, like, if we look at um, oops, we look at the API call itself, um, this is everything that's after the question mark. So, we've got the API key. Oops. Um, apparently, I'm stuck or something. Okay. Um, so, this is the screen name. So, this is going to be the type. Um, so, you can call screen name or you can call Twitter ID. Uh, so, like, if you know your Twitter ID, you can actually call by that instead. This is actually really common in big data that they only return the Twitter ID. Is anyone familiar with the Twitter API? Like, you guys actually mess with Twitter? Okay, so, like, you guys know that you actually get the Twitter ID back a lot more than you get the Twitter screen name. It's kind of annoying, but that's how Twitter works. Um, so, you can query by both. You can query by screen name or user ID. Um, and we're just going to specify which type that is there. Okay, so we have to loop through both. Um, so, I'm just going to do a really simple for loop. Um, Let's see here. So we actually have to do the query first. Here's the important part. Here's how you do the query. Um, let's see here. The first argument is the path to the query. Um, so strong links. And you can find this in the infochimps.api.com uh, documentation. And here's all the stuff that we pass um, at the end of the string. So we're actually going to say, uh, here we want to say what, ID type. ID. And I'm also going to say version number. And you can specify this, and this helps you stay just current with whatever version that you're working on. And then we're going to say not get. And that actually does the get request on these. Um, then we're actually going to return them, so we have to say query strong links, and that's what you actually get out of the query. And we're going to reject all the nils. This is actually a, an input jumps bug at the moment, and we have to work around it. And then we're also going to say query strong links, and this is a Ruby trick. 
that's how you do just the uh, just the ones that you want. So we only we only want to do one through ten. And I think you can actually say one dot 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 ten if you want to if you want. But um, I don't really like doing it that way. Uh, I'm going to throw in some error handling here, and this is so that if when we throw things through there, if we get back a blank request, we actually don't have to worry about anything. Um, we're just going to pass it a blank string. So the InfoChimps API gives you back errors in JSON. So like if if you query for something and it doesn't have it, it'll say, you know, it'll give you a little JSON hash and it'll say error and it'll give you the actual error. So if we have one, um, if it's present, uh, we're just going to say um, blank. Okay, so that's all we need. That's like our entire thing there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip. I think we're, uh, I really don't want to run into you guys this lunch, so I'm actually just going to check out from what I have here. Um, Anyone just walked into the room and catch up here. Okay, so this is the big method built out. So as you can see, this is just like a little bit prettier than how I wrote it. I made it private as well. Um, you guys can probably throw this in like a model or a helper or something. Actually, not a helper, but a library fun. And here's how we actually do it in the show. So the first thing that we're doing up here, and this is really cool, um, and this is something you guys should pay attention to. Uh, this is auto vivifying. Is anyone familiar with auto vivifying? Any Perl writers here either? Um, auto vivify is a feature of Perl. It's actually a really cool thing. Um, imagine it is. I like to imagine it anyway. It's like an initializer for a hash. Um, this is so you can actually uh, call a data structure without actually creating it. Um, this kind of just like auto populates in a way. Um, and this is what, something that we actually need to do in order to do through the API keys because if we come back with one that's empty, um, it's not going to work right. So the next line down, um, we're just looping through the first bit of strong links. And then this one, we're looping through the next bit. So like if bees didn't have the 10 out of 10, um, we'd be making 10,000 calls, but in this case, we're only making 100. Uh, we're passing the query param of like, whatever your ID was that you asked for, and it's going to be a screen name. And then since strong links returns a user, uh, user ID, uh, we're going to call it with that. So here's the part that does all the work, everything in here. So the things that we're getting, again, are count, weight, and trust strength. And this is the count of the number of times that user shows up in your strong links of your strong links. And then the weight, that's, that's the total weight that you accumulate as we uh, tally through them. And then we're also going to query the InfoChimps API again here. And that's what this little block is. And we're going to add that to the hash, just as trust. Uh, I just did it as a symbol. And you could actually put this up there and make it shorter. Um, and trust rank again is like page rank for Twitter. Then we're going to sort through all of them. And this is just like really simple Ruby sort. I assume you guys all know how to do this. Um, but this is a really cool way to deal with that uh, that if you don't have an SQL database to deal with, um, you can actually go in and say, uh, you know, deliver by descending or whatever. So you can actually sort by this. We can sort by count. We can sort by weight. We can sort by trust rank, whatever you want here. And then we do the respond to format. And this should run. Um, so the way to do this on the API or on the command line is you actually have to declare your API key in the command line because we declared the environment variable. You can actually put this in a config file if you really want to, but um, I like to do it on the command line because it's easier and uh, keeps the stuff out of my code, and I can also do it on Heroku very easily. Um, so well, yeah, the first thing here is just declaring your variable. Um, and you guys can grab this key from the GitHub repo. Anyone need that URL again? No? OK. Um, 
that's just an API key. If you sign up on api.infotrims.com, you can get your own. Don't use this one over because it's going to be limited after today. Um, and then I run Unicorn just because I like Unicorn better than Mudbird because I run out of the VM. You guys can use uh, the script server if you want. So I also need to know where I am. <laughs> So now we're going to call tweeters, which is our controller, and we've got friendly ID, so I can just call the username, so I'm going to call it Butchums. And so now is a good time to talk about performance, because as you can see, we're still making the request, and we actually don't even have a database. So the performance issue here is that we're making 100 API calls for strong links, because we've looped through all your API users, right? And then we're making 100 more API calls because we're looping through trust rank. Um, so that's 200 API calls at, you can figure for about 30 milliseconds a piece. And then you have the compute time after that. So here's a list. Um, and I, I didn't show you guys the show um, template yet, but first column is username. Second column is count. Third column is weight. And fourth column is their trust rank. So this is, a, this is really, really cool here, right? Because this is a list of your second hop out and it tells you just how connected you are to all these people. Are you guys familiar with LinkedIn? Yes, all LinkedIn. Um, so are you guys familiar also with LinkedIn's little blue circles that they put next to the names and they say first and second? This is essentially developing LinkedIn's second thing, but it's even cooler because it shows people by weight um, and there's various metrics to go along with them. So we're actually building something that's cooler than LinkedIn for the Twitterverse. Um, so you can see like some of the people that InfoChimps is, oh, can't really see them there. Most connected with are these folks. Anyone on this list? Anyone in the top? No? There's I think Michelle Damon's Greer here. From Rackspace. Huh? There are Damon and Michelle Greer from Rackspace. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are cool. OK, so I'm going to keep on going. Uh, I'm just going to check out the next iteration of this. So now, our other goal was to be able to sort, right? And do something really cool here. So what I've done is I've created a layout. And this is really simplistic. Um, can you all read that? Uh, it's jQuery. And then there's a jQuery plugin for a table sorter. It's this line. And then we have actually grabbed Twitter's Anywhere uh, API, which is Weird, but it works cool. Um, and then I dropped in the input chimp CSS just to make things pretty. And then we're going to yield it all right here. And I'll show you how to do the JavaScript in here. Uh, let me just run it so you guys can see what goes on. So I'll refresh that one. Again, continuing with performance. So when you make an API call, you have to figure for uh, network latency as well as compute time on each one of those things. So we need to go there and back. Um, so you have to figure for at least 30 milliseconds. If you're making 200 API calls, that's 6,000 milliseconds, which is six seconds. Then you have to figure for the compute time on each of those calls. Um, so that's, that's actually a really long time. Um, it's not the most performant thing that we can do, but this is the, the simplest thing. OK, so now we've got it pretty. And we've got it sortable. And can you guys see what's going on here? I can sort the columns. And we didn't use SQL at all. Um, so the reason this is really cool, of course, is because we can actually do all this crap. And the only thing that I actually did was drop some JavaScript in. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is the extent of the JavaScript right there. And this is just, everyone familiar with jQuery? Yes? jQuery. So jQuery, if you aren't familiar, allows you to uh, do really cool things with JavaScript very easily. Uh, this is a selector for jQuery. <clears throat> it selects the user ID. Um, so if we have a, uh, an ID element in our HTML called users, it'll select it. And uh, the jQuery table sorter function knows where to find t head and t body, and it knows where all these table headers are. And it says, hey, there's a column. I need to sort by it. 
and that's the entire extent of everything that you have to do in order to sort. So all you have to do is actually declare these table, uh, these table columns, and then say this. So we magically made this sortable, and now I can go through and see like who's most important more easily. Um, so we actually just sort of like count. Um, same people at the top here. You can sort by weight. So this is the number of interactions. So you can see that this list is a little bit different than count. Um, so say for example, you go. Are you guys familiar with Justin Bieber? Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's kind of semi-famous with Invento Chimps. He uh, he's the top tweeted app person. So while a lot of people believe that uh, people like Barack Obama and such are like the top users because they have the most number of followers, Justin Bieber, as, follow as far as uh, actual interaction goes, is by far the most powerful user on Twitter. Um, so he's kind of interesting, especially considering he just popped up and we have data back all the way to 2006. He's still number one. Uh, so he's pretty interesting. Uh, so someone like him. If you have a friend, say, who's really into Justin Bieber, might show up there like really high weighted because he or she uh, just tweets at Justin Bieber all day and is like, I love you, Justin Bieber, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's why you may not want to sort by weight, um, and it may not be as accurate. Trust strength, again, really cool. First person on here is Read Write Web. Um, we added the, uh, the hover card thing with the Twitter API, um, and you can pull this up really easily. Um, it gives you a little bit of information about them. Read Write Web is rated really high because they're followed by a lot of people who are very well followed as well. Um, I don't know what's the other people on top here. Generally, anyone. So this is uh, this is uh, logarithmic uh, to ten zero to ten scale. Uh, so anyone. So imagine like on the web, uh, Facebook, Google, MySpace, Twitter are all going to be like in the eight, nine, ten range. Those are the big maybe the ones that you actually recognize on Twitter. I can show you a quick on Trust Me. Um, this is our public exposure website for. Uh, trust rank, and as you can see, Justin Bieber is our top guy. Um, a plus K is Ashton Kusher, the guy I'm Diddy, John C. Mayer. These are all the top people, so I'm sure you guys probably know who most of these guys are. Amazingly, I didn't. Um, there are a lot of people on Twitter who, and I, I don't really follow the popular, uh, popular culture very well, so I didn't know um, uh, who was it? Uh, this, this girl, Kim Kardashian. I didn't know who she was. Um, but this is just a, an example of like, these are like the most influential people on Twitter as far as trust rank goes. We've got Kevin Rose and Katy Perry. Okay. Let's go back to the app. Oops. What am I doing on time? What time do we get out of here? 40. <laughs> what that for? Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I'm going to go actually back to the slides here. Okay, so again, if you guys want to follow along with the example, you can do this and you can just check out uh, the whole thing. Uh, I've added in some performance at the end. If you want to check out app progress dash four, that's where, or sorry, progress dash two, that's where we are right now. Okay, takeaways. So it's freaking easy. Uh, everything that we did with this is right here, and this is the InfoChim's query API call. We're eventually going to make these easier, um, but right now it's basically just telling the path and then some query parameters. This is all you have to do to get like uh, that massive freaking string that I showed you guys earlier, um, and this is an incredible amount of data right here. We do all the big data compute on it, so you don't guys don't have to. Auto Vivify, again, this is really cool. You should read about it more in your spare time. Wikipedia's article is okay. Um, look on the rest of the web, uh, just like Google for it, and you'll find some interesting resources. Again, it's something that's native to Perl, and you can do it really easily in Ruby just by doing something like this. It's just the beginning of this, actually, and then after it, it's, it's basically whatever you want to put it there. And again, this is like to kind of uh, auto-populate your hash. And this was really cool. Uh, we did everything that, we, that I just showed you without a database. So we did sorting um, in Ruby one time, and then we did sorting again in JavaScript the other time. We never used any SQL. Everything was uh, entirely uh, Ruby and Java based. Or sorry, JavaScript based. So I want to talk a little bit about performance. Um, I know you guys are probably concerned because you saw the load times. We had probably about like a 30 second load time for that page. That was 200 API calls, six seconds plus compute, blah, blah, blah. blah. The um, network is being hammered a bit here. Yeah, the network's slow here too as well. Um, the InfoChimps API is actually very performant. Um, so like if you guys are 
query in for Poem. Um, I think most of our response times are pretty much instant. Um, and network latency, you know, to us is we're in we're on Amazon, uh, so we've got like actually distributed. Uh, we're not CDN, but um, we've got load balancing and that sort of thing. Uh, so the different ways that we can deal with this, the way I dealt with it in my app, if you download the the GitHub app, the like the full one, I did it with page caching, and this is like a really really simplistic way to go about it, right? Because you can actually just go in and say, hey, I just want uh, I just want to cache everything that actually gets viewed. And you can, am I, am I too close to that thing? No. Okay. Uh, you can cache everything that gets viewed and that it never has to load again. Um, it's a really cheap and hackish way of doing it. <coughs> the other way is to limit number of requests, and we actually did that as well. And the way we did that was by saying the 0 0.9, and that only did 10 of the 10. So we only had to make 200 API calls instead of 2,000, or sorry, 20,000. Um, cache in the local database. So this is something, you, if you want to follow up with this on like how to deal with an API, are you guys all like super API hackers? Yes, super API hackers, awesome. Um, follow up with uh, Win Netherlands presentation. He's going to do one, I think, later today or tomorrow. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Uh, and he's going, to, he's going to talk a little bit more about caching in the local database. This is probably one of the, this is probably the next step that you should take. Uh, it's, it's one of the easier things to do. The other thing that is easy in concept to do is concurrent requests. Are you guys familiar with like concurrency and parallel versus serial sort of thing? Yes? Okay. Um, if you're not, I will explain it very shortly here. And that's, that's kind of small. Oops. Oh. There we go. Um, so the way that we're actually making the calls right now is like serial. So we make one call and we wait for it to return, and we make another call and wait for it to return, and we make another call. So every 20 milliseconds we have to wait, and it's all in a line. It's just a big cube, right? Um, the better way to do it would be in parallel. And this is so that we can say, hey, I want to make 100 API calls. They're each going to take 20 milliseconds, but the thing is we're going to do them all at once, and if the input chimps API can handle it, which it can, um, we can do it a lot faster. And the one way to do this would be with something like Event Machine. Uh, and I think, I think Event Machine is C-based. I can't remember. Um, but this allows you to do concurrent requests more easily. Um, the other way to do it is with um, oops, is with JavaScript, um, and that's a really hacky way to do it. Uh, so actually, if you end up with a page and you want to do all your code in the JavaScript, you can actually kind of cheat around uh, making those requests by just looping in your JavaScript with AJAX. Um, then this allows you to do concurrency without having to actually do concurrency in your Ruby code. Now, does your API allow you to batch requests? Not currently. Um, we're working on that. It's going to be something that's going to come out really soon here. So that should limit your, or sorry, uh, decrease your load time quite a bit. Okay. Uh, so some other cool stuff. Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, some other cool stuff. Scaling data. Uh, this is an example from our word bag call. So this is something you probably want to do in data a lot. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with logarithms, it's basically making uh, big numbers more understandable. So, for example, the Richter scale, the one that measures earthquakes, is on a logarithmic scale. So instead of having numbers like 0 to 20,000, um, we have 0 to 10, which makes it somewhat more understandable. <coughs> the uh, interesting side effect of that is that like a, uh, not a Richter scale 9 earthquake is 10 times as powerful as a Richter uh, 8 scale earthquake. So even though it's only one number up, it's, uh, it's 10 times as much. Um, so it's, it's somewhat misleading, but it actually makes things a lot more easy to deal with. This is a quick way to do it in Ruby. Um, it's just the math. Um, the math library. Uh, another thing, Twitter's API sucks for avatars. If you guys are just building Twitter apps and you just want to build a really quick app and put an avatar on, I promise you, if you try to interface with the Twitter API, you will be really pissed off. Um, I ran into this the first time that I, I did something, uh, but there's this really cool thing. Are, are these guys here, the tweet images guy? Anyone? I, I think they're PHP guys. Um, but it's a really simple API call. You don't even need an API key. Um, you just call this, and I shoved in an ERB thing there. Uh, you just put the, the username inside, and it'll return you a, a nice, and you can have like five different sized uh, avatars. Tracking your outgoing users, this is something if you're going to have a small app you're going to want to do uh, with Google Analytics because you're going to end up with a lot of clicks out, and you're going to want to know how many times people actually did that. Um, this right here is event tracking. There are two ways to do this. There's event tracking, and there's also, you can change this to like an outgoing thing. Are you guys all familiar with Google Analytics? Do you guys do work with Google Analytics? Um, so you can either do event tracking, which is kind of okay, 
Um, I prefer the other way, which is actually doing it through an outgoing link. And you can say, hey, this traffic was outgoing, and you have to specify it in JavaScript. It's just like this. Um, it's very simple to do, though. Um, just look at that. More cool stuff. Uh, consent. This is this took me forever to find, probably like a week um, before I, I was very close to writing it myself. And it's a really, really cool plugin that allows it's like a firewall for your Rails app. So it allows you to rate limit people. And this is cool for Rails in general, but this is even better for your API because um, you just let your API just sit there. You're like, sorry, your app just sit there. People can use your uh, app to kind of scrape the InfoChimps API, which is going to run up your bill instead of you know instead of theirs. Um, so you can do that based on IP. It's really, really simple to use. It's really cool. Um, this is probably the coolest plugin I've ever ran into in my entire life. This is Cashable Flash. Um, Pivotal came up with this, I think. Uh, at least they, they own the GitHub repo for it. Um, I'd love to cache whatever you want. So you can do page caching and not have to worry about anything. So you can do, so you don't have to worry about like fragment caching, which is a big pain in the ass if you ask me. Um, page caching will let you just be really fast. It actually put in the, the plugin lets you put stuff in JavaScript. So you don't have to worry about your caches getting like captured inside the uh, inside the flash and then like not caching for certain pages. OK, I'm going to end. I guess I'm early. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, and you can email me. Feel free. And uh, you can find me on the web, too. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Yeah. How hard would it be to adapt this to Facebook? I know their API is kind of harder than Twitter's. So uh, most of this is with the InfoChimps API. Um, actually, the only thing that we made with the Twitter API was the Twitter Anywhere thing. Um, Facebook currently doesn't have anything like that, mainly because it's so much more private than Twitter is. Um, as far as the data for Facebook, we have just begun collecting that data, and we actually haven't done any big data compute on it yet. We have MySpace and Twitter only right now. Um, so as far as making an app like this, uh, you could not do it unless you were willing to do the big data compute yourself. Um, but we will get around to it very shortly here. Um, Facebook is our next step. Yes? Um, what, what, if anything, do we need in terms of business for you? Do we have to pay you money to get access to this stuff, or what's the story? Yeah, so I'll show you the InfoChimps API site. It's free um, for your first 100,000 calls. We've got a value level subscription here. Um, all you have to do is sign up. It's just, a, it's just like a simple sign up page on the InfoChimps.org website. Um, you get 100,000 calls, and this is like so you can build your, you know, your basic app. Um, our next level up is really cheap. It's 20 bucks a month. Um, really simple. As you go up, this is like if you're making lots and lots and lots of calls, you're one of the big guys. Um, silverback and, and gold paper are much more expensive. But yeah, if you want to just start out, it's completely free. And when you sign up, you get an API key and stuff, so you can start playing right then. Anybody else? Okay, I'll let you guys eat lunch. Thanks for coming. See you later.